no fear Cause I believe There is no doubt Cause I have seen Your faithfulness My fortress Over and over I have a Son and Holy Spirit from wherever it is that you are, wherever it is, where it be home or on the road, on your cell phone, computer, by yourself in the worshiping presence of God, welcome. Let's begin together. For our God is able to do all things, and he is famous for doing things beyond recognition.
God is with us and on our side. God is with us. God is on our side. He will make a way. Far above all we know. Far above all we hold. He has done great things. Lifted up. He defeated the grave. Raised to book called My Utmost for His Highest. This is by Oswald Chambers, uh, a man born a long time ago and uh, a man of God. And even this particular edition is from 92. But it feels like something that could have been written for us today. This is the theology of resting in God. When we are afraid, the least we can do is pray to God. But our Lord has the right to expect that those who name his name have an underlying confidence in him. God expects his children to be so confident in him that in any crisis, they are the ones who are reliable. Yet our trust is only in God up to a certain point. Then we turn back to the elementary, panic-stricken prayers of those people who do not even know God. We come to our wit's end, showing that we don't have even the slightest amount of confidence in him or in his sovereign control of the world. And in a time like this, it feels like our world is out of control, and maybe even our God is asleep. Like the disciples in Matthew, as it's recorded in the storm, Jesus is resting on the boat during chaos. Not asleep because he didn't know what was going on, asleep because he knew he had nothing to fear. And in response to this, we too also feel like he seems asleep. And we can see nothing but giant breaking waves in the sea ahead of us. But his response to the disciples then is, oh, you of little faith. What a stinging pain must have shot through the disciples as they surely thought to themselves, we missed the mark again. And what a sharp pain will go through us when we suddenly realize that we could have produced complete and utter joy in the heart of Jesus by remaining absolutely confident in him in spite of what we're facing. There are times when there are no storm or crisis in our lives. We do all that is humanly possible. But it's when a crisis arises that we instantly reveal upon whom we rely. 
during times of crisis that it's revealed who it is that we rely on. Do we have faith in ourselves or faith simply in hope? Where is that hope found in? This song is one to give blessing during these times of uncertainty and chaos upon you and your family. It's the same way that we end a worship service. To say the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In this time of chaos and confusion, put your faith in him and may he bless you and your family.
Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, out of great love for each one of us, you sent your Son, Jesus. Out of great love for each one of us, you came. You lived. You died the, rest, the, the, the death of the cross. You rose again victorious, and you sent to us the Holy Spirit, that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the waters of our baptism. We would be connected, empowered, belong, strengthened for life, and saved for eternity between now and the day you get us home. So, dear Lord, as we bring this sermon series on baptism to a close here this weekend, I ask you that you would strengthen us by the perfect life lived, the, the substitute death died, and the victorious resurrection that is ours. Connected empowered and strengthened for every season of our life and the days in which we live this day. In your name we pray and begin. Amen. Amen. And so in this time together, we have been going through a sermon series on baptism. And we come to this, we come to this third and final week of the sermon series. And, and, it, and it's a joy to be able to visit with the folks who worship online at Chapel North, because I said in the other room, and I want to say to you today, I would really, really think that after everything we have said about baptism, that you would want to know when, where you were baptized. And if you have not been baptized, and you want to be able to give your life to Christ, and know that there's a very specific point in time where the Holy Spirit brought you from unbelief to faith. And you make that decision between you and Almighty God this day. And you want to be able to have something beyond your feeling and beyond your day to day. To be able to hang your hat on and intend to know that at that moment, in that time, Almighty God showed up, called me by name, and I am His. And following on the heels of a decision like that to give yourself away to the one who loved you so much if you were the only one to have ever sinned and fallen short of his glory, that you, he still would have come for you. You make a decision like that, you belong to him. And you've crossed over from death to life. Forgiveness is yours, belonging is yours, power is yours. And then, be baptized. Because there is an opportunity for you to know and understand that it doesn't matter how you feel on a particular day. doesn't matter what's going on in you, around you, in the world around you. 
that Almighty God showed up, wrote his name on the dotted line, and said to you, you're mine. Whether that baptism for you was as, as an infant or as an adult or it came, it came on the heels of a decision that you made for Christ, there is great power in this truth about holy baptism. And so I want to be able to encourage you who have been baptized. I want to be able to encourage you to do a search. Maybe it's in your home somewhere in some filing cabinet. Maybe, maybe you need to call the church where you were baptized and find out if they've got it on record. But do a search and find out when, where. Mark a time. Mark a time when Almighty God wrote his name on the dotted line and said to you, you're mine. When Almighty God wrote your name on the dotted line in the Lamb's book of heaven and said to you, you're mine. When he showed up to do what he said he was going to do. To connect you. To give you a connection point to the benefits of the cross and the empty tomb. Jesus died on the cross over 2,000 years ago on the other side of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, you became a believer in Jesus, either in the waters of your baptism or on the heels of a decision, when then you gave yourself to the water, you gave yourself to the Lord in the water. So find out when that time is. Mark it. Look, I know you all celebrate your birthdays. How much more? How much more should we be celebrating the day that God called us by name and connected us to the perfect life lived, the substitute death died, connected us, called us his own, connected us, connected us to the forgiveness, gave to us his presence, and said to us, I am with you. I will never leave you, never forsake you, but be with you all the way to the very end of the age, and I have prepared your place in heaven it's all done and delivered to you in the waters of your baptism. The other thing about this baptism then that is so powerful is, is that it's a, it's a one-time thing in your life back there somewhere or right now or out in your days ahead of you somewhere. It's a, it's a one-time thing for you between you and Almighty God when he writes his name on the dotted line and calls you by name and, and says to you, you're mine. But it's not a one-time event in the daily walk of the child of the king. It's a one-time thing, but it, there's a daily remembrance of the truth of it. That daily, the baptized man of God, daily, the baptized woman of God, daily, the baptized child of God remembers who they are. Remembers whose they are. Remembers that children of the king walk and act and talk a particular way so that then, when, not if, <laughs> when we don't, we got to go to the father. we got to go to daddy and say, I'm sorry, dad. Again and again and again, and his grace is there for you. Again and again and again, because you belong and he loves you. There is a one-time thing. Thing, but there's a daily remembering that leads us to repentance and to faith and to new starts on a daily basis between now and the day that he gets us home. One of the other things that comes to mind for me is from the text that is appointed uh, for this sermon series. It's John chapter 3. So if you open your Bible and get to John chapter 3, you'll see the story of Jesus in this conversation with Nick, uh, Nicodemus. And, and Nicodemus is an interesting character. He is a Pharisee, but he's a believer in Jesus, but he's all conflicted because he, he's a believer in Jesus, but he's also struggling with his place among the Pharisees and and, and, and so he comes to Jesus at night, and he has this conversation with him. And Jesus says this amazing set of things that in the beginning confused Nicodemus terribly. And if you don't understand it right, it can confuse us too. 
But in, in John chapter 3, he says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with them. Nicodemus is about to find out so much more. Jesus' answer blows him away. He says, I tell you the truth, Nicodemus. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Unless he is born again. If you are born again, then you see the kingdom of God. And wherever the king is, that's where his kingdom is. Wherever Jesus is, there is his reign and rule. When you become a believer in Jesus, then God sets up shop. Jesus sets up shop in you, among you, to reign and rule, not to follow your call, but to reign and rule in your life every day so that you would live in life as the royalty that you truly are between you and him. He says to us, no one can see the kingdom of God. See it, perceive it, experience it, wallow in it, sit and soak in it, have your life worked out because of the truth of its presence, reign and rule of God in your life in your marriage, in your home, wherever you go, wherever Jesus is, that's where the kingdom is. But, you, but unless you're born again, you, can't, you, you won't see this. Well, what's he mean by being born again? Look, I, here it is. Without the Holy Spirit bringing me from unbelief to faith, without the Holy Spirit bringing me from being spiritually dead. For example, if I fell out dead right now on the floor, Oh, dear God, please no. <laughs> um, but if I fell out dead on the floor right now, unless something on the outside, if I'm really dead, it, unless something on the outside acts on me like paddles or something like that, I ain't coming back to life. It's never happened. Never will. Every single person that's ever risen from the dead, there was something or someone who on the outside acted on them to bring them back to life. Or they weren't really dead. And so I was spiritually dead in my transgressions and sins. No way for me to make a decision to make Jesus the Lord of my life and bring myself back to life because I'm dead. Born again means that the Holy Spirit works saving faith in you like the paddles and revives you, brings you to new life in Christ, in faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's what he's talking about. And when he comes to Nicodemus and he says this, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. That's what he's talking about. The text then goes on to say in verse 4, how can a man be born when he's old? Notice Nicodemus doesn't get it. Nicodemus asked, surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. It just occurs to me that we could laugh at Nicodemus the way I just did. Or we could understand that in the days in which we live, we don't get it either. There are things happening in your world and in your life and in your walk in the world in these days where you're throwing up your hands and you're saying, I don't understand. Where are you, God? And Almighty God has such a bigger, better answer for you the way that he did for Nicodemus this night. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. That, my friends, is baptism talk. That, my friends, is location, connection, power, 
once for all time, but a daily remembering kind of benefit of the waters of baptism in our life. The Holy Spirit works saving faith and brings us from unbelief to faith and connects us to the victory of the cross and the empty tomb. Something that happened over 2,000 years ago on the other side of the world. He, the text goes on then to say, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind, the Holy Spirit, the wind blows wherever it pleases. Wow, that's a scary thing to think that it may not blow on me or blow in me. But in the waters of baptism, we have a word from God that says there, right then and there, he locates himself for you because it pleases him and the Holy Spirit does his work to bring you from unbelief to faith. I, let me just say to you in closing the sermon that um, we're in a season where I wish that every single person who was connected to Hales Corners Lutheran Church would love one another and love those that he brings across the path of your life enough to stay six feet apart. I, I, I wish that was true. But some of you seem to love one another so much that you can't stay away from one another. And, and I understand it's hard. It's hard. I know it. But then we do this weird kind of, we do this weird kind of thing where you, where you say to one another, well, um, we're too close and I love to shake hands. I can't hug you, but we'll do this. Let's do this fist bump thing. What, what in the world does that mean, sister? I'm not, I'm not even sure what that means. It doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, so if you can't, I wish you would, but if you can't stay six feet apart, let me give you another idea. Dear brother in Christ named Gordy Wickland died and went to heaven. And when he, and before he went, he shared with me uh, what they used to do in his congregation in Florida when they were down south. Um, so put your arm up like that and just hold it strong. So um, he used to, whenever they would come together, because, you know, all of, all of the folks in Florida, they were like really old and they were scared of infecting one another even before COVID came. So they would come up to one another. One of them would have their hand this way. Almighty God here, you here, this vertical relationship between you and Almighty God. And then the other one would come this way and they would make the sign of the cross that way to one another as a way for the brothers and the sisters in Christ, the baptized, to greet one another. It says a lot. Let's do it again. It says a lot. That almighty God, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. In these days in which we live today, my hope and my prayer that you, the baptized, would remember who you are and remember that he calls you by name and says to you, you're mine, and that you would love one another both those in the household of faith and those in the neighborhood and those around the way, regardless of where they come from, regardless of, of what they believe, regardless of the color of their skin, that you, the body of Christ where you are, would love one another. And when you greet one another, I don't, I don't need you to fist bump with me, but let's make the sign of the cross. It'll be our own thing. Make the sign of the cross to one another, saying to one another, love the Lord your God. You and I together, we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and we love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Have a great week in the Lord. Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, you call me, you call us, you call each one of us from unbelief to faith by the power of the Spirit connecting us to the Christ. In the waters of our baptism, we are connected. You are our power. We are not weak in the world. You have given to us victory to live out every day, boldness and courage, replace fear with faith. 
Replace confusion and anxiety with peace of heart and peace of mind and boldness and courage that comes from being the baptized in the world in these days. Dear Lord, I ask you that you would inspire the weak of your people and that you would bring them back together again. I ask you, dear Lord, that you would strengthen us to know who we are and whose we are to meet these days and to greet one another with the sign of the cross in our lives, in our every day. Dear Lord, show us that moment where you put your name on the dotted line and connected us to the Christ. Show us that moment that we would mark it, more than a birthday, that we would mark the eternal anniversary of the day that you called us by name and connected us and gave us an inheritance that will last forever. In your name we pray, dear Jesus. Amen. Well, it is that time. It is that time uh, for for giving in response to the way you've been given to. Um, And so the offering for today, we wanted to be able to take a little bit of just a moment and be able to give you instruction. Those of you who give online, uh, we thank you. We rejoice in that. And we uh, give you thanks for giving that way. And those of you who haven't begun to give that way yet, we wanted to be able to help you figure that out and navigate that. So take a look at this.
so I want to be able to send you out into your life as a child of the King, um, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and to bless you at the end of this worship service and to send you out uh, as uh, the baptized the way that the covenant people of God always did it. I want to share with you in closing um, from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, the priest, uh, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. In the waters of your baptism, Almighty God has put his name on you and you are blessed. And so go out and live your life as one who has been baptized. Have a great week in the Lord. Do you have questions about heaven? Most people do. And, and most people have, have answers or, or thoughts or, or theories about those questions connected to heaven. Now, in this new sermon series throughout the month of August, we're not going to answer every question that you have about heaven, but we will answer the question what God's word has to say about heaven. And in the midst of that place, in God's word, as we, as we lean into and, and learn more in a, in a fuller way, what, what that promise of heaven is for us, it's our hope and prayer that, that you begin to see that that hope of heaven, that promise of heaven shapes how you live in the world today. So join us for a sermon series on heaven throughout the month of August. Finally home, what heaven means for earth.